Off with PRPA's uh, talk, uh, control of dipole dipole interactions in a frozen assembly of Rydberg atoms. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. So it's a great pleasure to be here. In fact, uh, I would like to thank the organizer. And uh, in fact, it's the third time I've come for a Rydberg workshop here. And so I would like also to thank the director of uh, ETAM for uh, offer the opportunity to organize this very nice meeting, very exciting meeting. So the, the, the subject of my talk is the control of the dipole-dipole interaction. In fact, I would like to show you the possibility to use the Foster resonance to uh, make a lot of control, control of the collision with the bending ionization and also control of the dipole blockade. And in the last part of my talk, I will discuss also the use of adiabatic passage to make the Landau-Zener transition using a Foster resonance. So uh, a lot of people have uh, participated to this uh, different kind of experiment. So the experiment with the cesium in a mud have been made uh, with, my, with my collaborator Daniel Compara. People involved are Thibaut Vogue, Mathieu Vito, and Amod San They were graduate students in my group. A Chinese visitor, Jiang Lin Zhao. And on this subject, I have collaboration with uh, Tom Gallagher and also Dan Can Tate. Uh, the experiment concerning, in fact, the collective uh, excitation of a pair of uh, atoms made in rubidium at Institute Optique are in collaboration with Philippe Granger and Nathan Vouvrez. There is a group of Institute Optique here. And the last experiment, which concerns, in fact, a, a not very cold atom. In fact, we use a supersonic beam of sodium, are performed with a Nikola Vanek, and uh, Nicolas Sake and uh, Anna Cornell are graduate students in this group, and Jérôme Bonion was a postdoc on this uh, subject. So the outline of my talk is uh, the use of uh, Foster resonance for collision and interaction, and I would like to show you the, the um, way to control the pinning ionization and the, also the way to realize the dipole blockade in the excitation, which concerns the limitation of this excitation by the dipole-dipole interaction. So this is in a large atomic ensemble. After, I will consider, in fact, simplest uh, system, meaning uh, only two atoms, and that's concerned, in fact, the collective excitation in the dipole blockade regime of uh, two individual atoms in a uh, micro trap. And finally, I will discuss the landau zener transition in a pair of Friedberg atoms. So the first resonance, in fact, it was not cool like, like that at this time, but has been introduced by uh, Tom Gallagher with a resonant Rydberg atom, Rydberg atom collision in uh, 1981. So at this time, the, the result was uh, already remarkable because, in fact, the impact parameter of this kind of collision was huge, uh, already one micrometer. The, the time of the collision also was huge, one nanosecond or even 10 nanoseconds. <coughs> in fact, we have uh, generalized uh, the use of the Foster resonance in the frozen Rydberg gas by using a magneto-optical trap, so in the year 1998, and a lot of new physics appear, in particular the many-body effect. So what is the Foster resonance? I present you the case of the cesium. In the case of the cesium, the P3 alpha state is roughly midway in energy between the Ns and the N plus 1s state. And if we add a small electric field, we can uh, exactly put in resonance the P state midway the two N, N state. And because of the dipole-dipole interaction, we can have exchange of internal energy between a pair of atoms in P state with a pair of atoms in NS and plus one S state. So this is true for N la smaller than 42. This is no more true for N larger than 40, 42. In this case, we have no foster resonance. But uh, this kind of configuration is very interesting, even in zero field. It's a way, in fact, to control the force which is exerted between two Rydberg atoms, which interact, in this case, uh, <coughs> by uh, the dipole-dipole interaction. So uh, if we have an uh, attractive force, we should have a collision between the two atoms with a penning ionization. So two atoms in P stage will give an ion plus another atom less excited. If we have a repulsive force, we can avoid the pinning ionization. So, 
So experiment so is made with a cesium atom. We have a three-step excitation up to the NP3 half states. So we use CW laser. We apply this laser by, by uh, uh, during a short time, 300 nanoseconds. We have nearly no ion formed during this excitation. And then later we apply a pulse to uh, selectively ionize the Rydberg atom and also to push the eventual ion which are formed during the, during the time after the excitation. So we can detect the ion and the Rydberg. So if we consider the excitation of atom below n equal 42, in fact. And if we looking at the potential curve of the pair of atoms, so versus the distance between the two atoms, uh, due to the coupling uh, <coughs> with the S, ns and n plus 1 s state, we have a repulsive uh, potential between the two atoms. So the force which is exerted between the two atoms due to the interaction, in fact, it's a second order dipole-dipole coupling, is repulsive, and we have no collision. On the contrary, if we consider n larger than 42, the, the potential curve of the pair of atoms is now attractive, and we should have a collision and penning ionization. So the experiments are made in zero field, zero electric field, and we, after a time, a lo relatively longer time after the excitation, it's uh, okay, 10 microseconds, we detect the number of ions which have been formed versus the number of initial Rydberg which have been made during the excitation. So you see here the number of Rydberg atom, initial Rydberg atom, and here the number of ions. And we see a dramatic change in the behavior of the, the curve for the formation of ions. We have a more or less a linear evolution of the number of ions for n smaller than 42 here, so I don't comment, but essentially this ionization is due at least at the beginning to black body ra radiation. But for n larger than 42 here, we have a, a fast increasing, so <coughs> a quadratic uh, evolution of the number of ions, which is due to collision between the Rydberg atom. And this is, in fact, the signature for the attractive force between the Rydberg atom. And uh, this uh, kind of collision can lead up to the formation of an ultra cold plasma. That means, in fact, the penning ionization forms a, a space charge of ion. When the space charge is enough to trap the electron, we have uh, avalanche ionization and the formation of an plas ultra cold plasma with a complete ionization of the atomic sample. So you can uh, see a little bit more. So we see the evolution of the curve at different uh, time after the excitation, half a microsecond, five microsecond, and 10 microsecond. I don't comment too much. Just maybe here, you see the difference uh, between the 40p and 43p. So uh, we scan the laser for different uh, rate of excitation, high rate and a lower rate of uh, excitation of atom, and you see a small formation of uh, ion in the both case. So this is for 40p. For 43, in particular for a large excitation, at resonance we have near, we detect 10 microseconds after the excitation, nearly no more Rydberg atom. Everything has been ionized and we have the, here the formation of an ultra cold plasma. So this is a very interesting, in fact, because it's a way to avoid the formation of ion, which are uh, always uh, in a lot of experiments, um, a spurious effect for the, for the Rydberg experiment. And it's so, so it is also very interesting, in fact, to control the formation of ultra cold plasma, and it can be also a way to have a, a shim for the formation of a correlated plasma. So I would like also to say a few words about the dipole blockade at the Foster resonance. So we consider always now the, the same uh, configuration of the Foster resonance, but no more at zero field, but at a, a small field, which adjusts exactly the resonance between the, the two curves. Uh, so the, the, this is the diagram of energy for two atoms, and the PP curve cross the NS and plus one S curve in, uh, for 
uh, value of the electric field, F0, due to the dipole-dipole uh, interaction, we have an avoided crossing. And if we want to excite a second Rydberg atom in the vicinity of a first excited Rydberg atom, due to the dipole-dipole interaction, we have a shift, and we have the dipole blockade. So the Foster resonance of a, a very nice way to uh, study the, the dipole blockade. And we have demonstrated this uh, first in uh, 2006. And you see here, outside of the Foster resonance, when we excite the Rydberg atom and we scan the laser, we have this kind of resonance. But at the Foster resonance, we have a decreasing of the excitation. So we have a dip here, uh, which is a limitation of the Rydberg excitation. So this uh, limitation here is a uh, 30 uh, percent, and this is due to the fact we have not uh, considered a very high hen. It's uh, only a principal quantum number 36, and so the dipole-dipole interaction is not so uh, important. But in other configuration, we can consider higher hen, uh, 60 or 50, um, right, which uh, uh, lead to a larger uh, dipole blockade. So, a little bit more. Uh, so you see here the dipole blockade effect with the limitation of the excitation of a number of atoms. And uh, we see also the transfer in the n plus 1 s state, so it's a green line. Uh, during uh, during the, the time between the excitation and the detection, we have a formation of a few number of ions. It's a, not very important here, it's on less than 1%. It is interesting to notice that for a higher electric field compared to the Foster resonance, we obtain more ion, and this is due to the fact we are in a configuration where here also we have an attractive force between the atom, and so we have more penningalization. And if you believe, we can see for lower field, we have uh, in the vicinity of the resonance, we have also maybe less formation of ion. So that's all for the, the, the experiment concerning a large en ensemble of uh, a Rydberg atom with a cesium. I would like now to consider only the case of uh, two atoms. So this is experiment which has been performed at Institute Optique and which, consi which uh, considers the excitation, the Rydberg excitation of a pair of atoms in the blockade regime. So in the blockade regime, in fact, we excite uh, uh, collectively an ensemble of uh, atoms which are in the zone where the blocking occurs, in fact. So we should, and this has been mentioned several times, have a Rabi frequency which is multiplied by the square root of the number of atoms in the zone of the blockade. So in the case of uh, two atoms, we should have obtain a Rabi frequency which is multiplied by square root of two. So we would like to demonstrate this uh, effect and the setup of uh, uh, Institute Optics, so this is the setup of Philippe Banger and Antoine Vauvé, was very powerful to do that. So I, I don't want to comment too much the setup, but they have uh, two micro dipole traps, so two tweezers, which contain maximum of one atom or zero, but never two. So these two traps so have a distance which can be adjusted between roughly 20. A micrometer and one micrometer. So they can adjust this distance. So they have uh, the two dipole trap, they have a mode, and they looking at the fluorescence of the mode for the two individual atoms. And uh, at some time, roughly a quarter of the time, they have uh, two atoms in the same time in, the, in both traps. So in this case, they have two atoms. So what is the experimental protocol for demonstrating the dipole blockade between these two atoms? So the two atoms are in the trap, and then we excite the two atoms in a Rydberg state, or we want to excite the two atoms in the Rydberg state. And then, after the excitation, uh, after a given time uh, for the duration of the excitation, we detect if the atoms are still in the trap. So, if we... Uh, detect uh, nothing, so no atom in the trap. So the, atom, the two atoms were present in the trap before the excitation. After the excitation, we have no more 
uh, atoms. That means, in fact, they have been excited in Rydberg atom, and there are no more traps, so they go away. So we assume, if we have no C, that the two atoms were uh, simultaneously excited in Rydberg state. If we detect the two atoms, we assume there is no Rydberg excitation uh, after the, the duration of the excitation time. So the, the time, the, the end of the time of the excitation. Uh, if we detect one atom in a trap and no atom in, in the other trap, we assume only one, Rydberg, one atom has been excited in a Rydberg state. So that's the procedure. So we are now in the uh, in a blockade configuration, which corresponds also to roughly to a quasi foster configuration. So in the case of the rubidium, we excite in fact the 50 d 3 half mg 3 half And if we, if we consider a pair of atoms in these uh, two states of so 50 8 d 3 half we have a quasi coincidence with a pair of atoms, one in 60 p 1 half and the other in 6, 50 6 f uh, phi half. So it's a, a quasi resonance, in fact, quasi foster resonance. The difference between these uh, two energy is 7 megahertz. So uh, we excite this pair of atoms in a Rydberg state. So first we excite uh, first Rydberg uh, 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 first atom in a Rydberg state, here. So this is the ground state. And then we excite, uh, we try to excite the second uh, atom. But due to the dipole dipole uh, interaction, we have a shift uh, of this uh, level and we, have, uh, we are in the blockade regime. So in fact, we are in the blockade regime considering the Rabi frequency of the excitation, which is 7 megahertz, at a distance of the order of 8 micrometer. So if the distance between the two atoms is larger, we have no uh, dipole blockade. If it's smaller, we should expect to have the dipole blockade. So first, we excite uh, each atom individually. So in absence of the other atom in the uh, of the other trap. And you see, versus the duration of the excitation, the Rabi oscillation of the, uh, of the, uh, of the transition for the, uh, for the atom from the ground state to the Rydberg state. So we see this kind of oscillation. So if we want to uh, excite the second atom, so if we are at a distance between the, the, two, the two trap of uh, 18 micrometer, so we don't expect to have any blockade of the excitation. And we expect, in fact, to have a variation of the probability of the excitation of the two atoms, which is the product of the probability to excite one atom by the probability to excite the other one. So this is the, the curve, which is only the product of the, this uh, two curve. So these two curves are experimental, and this is a product of this two experimental curve. And now we compare that with the measure probability to uh, excise the two atoms. And we have a good agreement. So in this case, we excite both uh, atoms in a Rydberg state, and we have no dipole, di dipole di interaction between these two Rydberg atoms because they are too far, 8 times micrometer. So the atoms are independent. Now we do the same thing, but at a smaller distance, 3.6 micrometer. So we excite each atom in absence of the other. So we obtain the same curve as previously. So uh, if we consider now the product of the two, prob of the, uh, of the two probability to excite one atom and, and to excite the other one, this is the blue curve. So this is the product of the two experimental curves. And if we compare to the probability to excite the two atoms at the same time, so the experimental result, we see it's very different. And we have nearly no excitation of the two, at two atoms in the Rydberg state at the same time. So that means we have uh, demonstrated at this point the blockade. So we can go, so this is the summary of the, this experiment. So at small distance, we have the blockade. We, have, uh, we are not able to excite both atoms in a Rydberg state at the same time. And at large distance, we can do that. So now what else? So if we excite uh, one atom in a Rydberg state, we cannot excite the second 
in also in real backstage due to the blockade. So if we are in this configuration, so if the two excitation are not made in the same time, we can have a, a kind of conditional excitation, which can be an interesting result. But now if we excite both atoms in the same time, we should have a collective uh, excitation. So in fact, the basic, uh, which is considered here, which is uh, one atom in the ground state, one atom in the Rydberg state is not a good basis. We have to consider the collective basis, which means the symmetric and the anti-symmetric superposition of J Rg plus, uh, J plus or minus Gr. So if we are in the ground state, we cannot excite the anti-symmetric state, but we can excite the symmetric state. And now the rabbit frequency is multiplied by square root of 2. And due to the dipole, dipole interaction, we are in the blockade regime. And so we can not excite a second atom. So this is interesting because now, if we're looking at the probability of uh, excitation versus the, the duration uh, of the excitation, we should obtain no more rabbit frequency omega, but a rabbit frequency multiplied by square root of 2. And we have, so observe uh, this kind of result. And you see, when we excite both atoms in the same time, we have no, uh, no more uh, for a single excitation. So we have only one red excitation, but it's a collective excitation. And the rabbit frequency of the signal is now square root of 2 uh, multiplied by uh, omega. So this is, I think, a, a clear demonstration for the collective uh, character of the excitation in the dipole blockade regime. So this is uh, my collaboration with the group of Philippe Grangier. It stopped here. It was only to consider the Rydberg excitation. But they go further uh, recently. And in particular, when we do that, in fact, we uh, entangle the two atoms, one in the ground state, one in the Rydberg state. But they want, in fact, to realize a little bit. They want to realize the entanglement of two atoms in the ground state, in fact, in two different uh, <coughs> hyperfan level, and they have done that. So that means they have made the desexcitation of the Rydberg state to another uh, hyperfan ground state, and they have uh, demonstrated the entanglement of the two atoms in the ground state in different uh, hyperfan level, and they have a measure a fidelity of point, uh, 0.75. So I have not involved in this experiment, so I don't say more. And I would like to, uh, to discuss a, a last uh, kind of experiment, always in a Foster uh, resonance uh, configuration. But uh, now uh, we consider, in fact, uh, an adiabatic phase, uh, rapid passage uh, through the Foster resonance to, to realize the landau zener transition. So it's another kind of setup, which is a little bit uh, different. So it's a supersonic uh, beam of uh, sodium. In fact, this uh, kind of uh, uh, supersonic uh, device is realized to uh, perform a Rydberg stark decelerator of atom or molecule. Up to now, we work with atom and a simple atom, which is uh, sodium. So uh, this, uh, I don't want to comment so much uh, apparatus. We, we use uh, laser ablation to realize the supersonic beam. You have the skimmer, we have a valve, so it's a pulse beam, uh, which is interesting. It's maybe the average velocity, which is uh, 90 uh, hundred meters per second, and the transversal temperature, which is of, of the order of uh, one Kelvin. So now we excite the, the atom in the NS state. So it's a sodium, and we have a nice Foster resonance, well known from a long time by Tom Gallagher, which is uh, two atoms in the NS state, match roughly the, the energy uh, of two atoms, one in NP and one in N minus P. So if we add a small electric field, we can obtain the Foster resonance. So, uh, so the excitation is a two-step excitation. The, the, the first is a pulse laser. The second step of the excitation is a titanium sapphire laser, CW laser. And it's uh, made between the two, uh, two, two plates. So the, the 
plate P2 and P2 and P3, and we uh, ionize selectively the Rydberg atom between the plate P3 and P4 with this kind of a field, which allows us to detect selectively the population in the NP state and uh, in the same time of the population in the NS state. So now, after the, the excitation in zero field, we apply an electric field to uh, cross, in fact, the first resonance. So we apply this kind of pulse between the, the plate uh, P2 and P3, and we can increase, in fact, the amplitude of the field to, uh, to be able to, to reach uh, uh, the first resonance and to go further. And when we do that, in fact, we cross uh, twice the first resonance, and due to the relatively low temperature, it's, uh, it's not a micro Kelvin, but it's still the Kelvin, during the time of the applic application of the field, at, at least at the rise time, we can consider the two atoms are frozen. So you see here the, uh, the transfer of, of the atom from the NS state to the NP state when we uh, scan the electric field. So we, we change the amplitude, maximum amplitude of the electric field. So we see first a peak here, and this peak corresponds to the maximum of field to reach the resonance. And when we go further than the resonance, so we have the rapid adiabatic pressure through the resonance, we see we have a, a relatively large number of uh, atoms which are transferred in the AP, N, NP state through a lando uh, transition. So you see the result for N equal to 53, uh, 48, and 43. So we have uh, demonstrated here the possibility uh, to uh, make a lando transition. And in fact, at this point, for a pair of atoms, we have also an entangled state between the two atoms in NP and in A minus min uh, P. So a little bit more on this result. So uh, you see here, in fact, the duration of the electric field. That means, in fact, the duration between uh, the, 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 the first rise time and the, the, the second rise time to come back to zero. So, in fact, this duration can be vary. And you see, uh, in fact, if we are in the, in the uh, below the landau uh, transition, so below the DG, if we don't reach the transition, we have no transfer. If we uh, go further than the resonance with the field, we have uh, a transfer, which is a constant in time. It does not depend on the time. And the contrary, if we stop at the first resonance, we have a collision, in fact, between the atom inside the supersonic beam. Now, we, we, are, not, we are not in the condition of the frozen uh, system. And we see an increasing of the uh, transfer due to the collision. So that corresponds, in fact, to the landau transfer. Uh, we have made an, uh, a study uh, versus the rise time, and our result fit pretty well, in fact, the landau theory. So, uh, in conclusion, so in conclusion, uh, okay, it's not conclusion only for my talk. So, the Rydberg physics with the cold atom is uh, very rich. So, I, I have uh, demonstrated that the Foster resonance can have uh, a lot of uh, use, in fact, and it's a really good configuration for engineering, uh, atomic engineering, using the Rydberg excitation. So I have uh, demonstrated the way to control the penning ionization, and it can be uh, really interesting in uh, a lot of experiments with Rydberg atom. The application of the dipole blockade for the quantum gate is, uh, is uh, clearly now demonstrated uh, by a different group, and Max Hoffman should uh, say more about that. And, uh, Philippe Grangier and Antoine are not there, but they have uh, demonstrated the entanglement of uh, two atoms, and their fidelity is uh, 75%. Uh, the landau transition is also a way which is uh, really interesting, for instance, to, to make the selection of pairs at a given distance, by a uh, <coughs> twice passage, with different rise time. And also, it can be interesting also to 
study a few body effect in a Rydberg gas by successive uh, adiabatic passage between the potential curve. And, uh, okay, uh, in the lab we have now uh, a progress for the stark Rydberg decelerator of a third personic beam, and we hope uh, very soon to be able to form a, a cold sample by using this kind of uh, decelerator. I thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. We have uh, time for questions. Tom? So, Pierre, in, in the Landau Zinger experiment, if you, when the field is set at the resonance, how sharp is the, Have you looked at how sharp the resonance is? Uh, can you see more less on the, on the data? Which one of those is at present? So, okay. So this is a field, and this is a, a sharpness, in fact. In we, we have just at resonance here, in fact. Okay. So that's uh, roughly two volt per centimeter, and uh, okay, it's uh, roughly uh, uh, alpha. So. In time, what is it? Uh, <coughs> so in time, it should be of the order of uh, uh, a few nanoseconds, in fact. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In these experiments with the um, the uh, transition, so you also run the field back at the end, yes. so the pulse goes back. So when you change the duration, you should start seeing uh, Stuttgart oscillations. Yeah, we hope to see that, yes, oh, yeah. but um, okay, probably we don't see that. In fact, uh, we are not cold enough, in fact. We, I think we have frozen during the right time, but, uh, okay, we have uh, at the limit of the frozen uh, condition, in fact. So when we come back, in fact, the, the two atoms are far uh, altogether, and we have new pair of atoms, which are, can be considered also uh, in, the, in the next... Uh, in the second uh, Landau Zener transition, in fact. So, okay, we have to improve the setup or to, to do the, set, the same experiment in another kind of uh, apparatus with a low, lower temperature, in fact. Citizen, Professor Rita. <laughs> <laughs> so you could get these oscillations also by changing the, the peak of the electric field. So now if you look at your N equals 48 curve, looks like there's a little bit of a second bump around yeah. 0.7 or so. So did you check whether that would roughly pan out if you calculate where yeah. the second peak should occur? Mm. Could, could, it could be due to some uh, interaction, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure of that. So, you know. okay. Roughly, we are not in the, in the condition. But. Here, uh, would you mind going back to your experimental slide? Uh, I, you had four plates, and I was just wondering, what do the four plates do? You said that you excite between so two uh, and three or something. We, we excite <coughs> because the first is, uh, we don't need really the first. So the, between the, the two and three, we have the excitation, and we apply the, this kind of uh, field, in fact, also, between two and three. And in fact, the detection, which means the ionization, is done uh, between the plates three and four, in fact, so further after. So, okay. the, the, so the, the atom move like that, they are excited, we have the Landau Zener transition, and we detect them here selectively. And, and there's no buffer gas uh, as part of the supersonic expansion, or is there? Uh, uh, there is buffer gas. There, there is a buffer gas of yeah. helium, or? It's helium, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, in the experiment with uh, just the two atoms, and you're looking at the phosphor resonance part, there was some stuff going up with time. Was that because of a phosphor zero, or is that just? Which experiment? Go, go back one more slide, maybe? That one. So the black line is sort of not non-zero and roughly slowly going up. Could, is that due to just phosphor zeros in the interaction? 
or is that just what you would expect sort of from, I guess what I'd just say, experimental noise? Uh, is that a real, so I guess I'm asking, is no, that it's, a real No, it's real, thing? but uh, um, Okay, the, the duration is is long, so we are able to excite also a second atom. In fact, so the, the blockade is really in this uh, in the, in the, the beginning. So even if we have uh, out of resonance, we have uh, still uh, some uh, feedback excitation. So we, we have the blockade here. In fact, uh, I, I am not sure exactly. Wh wh which, why the signal increases more and less linearly in time? I think the slow one just corresponds to a small probability. Yes, it's a, a small probability of excitation. Then the probability will be proportional to time, right? If the probability is small. So here we have the, the blockade. In, in fact, we have a relatively uh, high uh, Rabi frequency. Okay, let's uh, thank Pierre again.